Hey everybody, welcome in, welcome in. Uh, fun one today, we're going to be assembling our puzzle cubes. So you can see I've got my five pieces right here, orange, white, black, and green, and I'm gonna be assembling them into a finished product here. So let's go ahead and insert a new element and we will create an assembly. Now once the assembly loads, we're going to insert our pieces. We'll come up here to the insert button and uh, you can just click on all of these and we'll insert them and you can see they're kind of overlapping and I'm going to show you the reason why. There we go. And the reason why is because they all share a common origin point. So wherever you set the origin point when you are making the part, uh, that is where it is going to land when you make the assembly. So first things first, let's just go ahead and drag these apart uh, just by clicking and dragging on them and uh, kind of sort out the pieces so we can look at it, start making some sense of everything. Okay, so we've got our pieces all separated here. And you'll see if you click on a piece that you can move it six different ways, right? You can move it linearly in two directions. You can, um, well, I guess you can move it linearly in three directions, either positive or negative direction. You can also rotate it again in three directions, right? You can rotate it like that. You can rotate it like this. And of course, you can rotate it in the third dimension as well. That means that each of these pieces has what's called six degrees of freedom to it. Um, since it can move in six different ways, right? It has three linear movements. It has three rotations. Uh, so what we're going to do is slowly take away those degrees of freedom um, by bonding and mating the parts together. So first thing we're going to do is pick a base. I'm going to choose the blue piece because it kind of sits flatly at the bottom of the cube. Uh, and I'm going to make that my base. But before I can use it, I need to flip it over. So let's go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and get that one precise. And uh, there we can see I've rotated it. Okay, that should be good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, right click, and I'm going to fix this into position. Now this means that I cannot move it anymore. You can see whenever I try to move it, the fixed position comes up. That one is also fixed. You can see it's fixed right there, whereas the rest of these have degrees of freedom. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the green piece on top of it. I'm going to uh, first kind of rotate it just to get it approximately where I want it and then drag it into place. Oh, and it needs to go up. So let's move it up and then there you can go. It's ready to kind of fall into place on top of the blue uh, chunk there. So let's see, we're going to grab a fastened mate and apply it to the blue and to the green. So let's grab the tool and we're going to choose kind of a location on each one um, to bond them together, right? To lock them together. So I'm going to choose this corner right here and uh, click on it. And then I'm going to choose this bottom corner right here. And I have to make sure to choose the corner also facing the right direction, right? You can see sometimes it faces the wrong direction. I want to make sure that it's facing up and the green one's facing down. Uh, so that it will glue them together in the right way. You can also kind of tinker with it, right, by rotating it here. You can also change the direction of it. Um, but I don't really want to do any of that, right? I, I kind of moved it into the right place so that everything would go smoothly. And there it is. It's now locked on there. And you can see that the green has no degrees of freedom left. Next, we will assemble the white piece. Uh, so again, oops, no. So now it kept my fastened tool active. So I want to not do that. First thing I'm going to do is grab it and twist it kind of into position here. Now this is looking a little bit sloppy, but that's probably fine. All right, so that's kind of how we want to put it in there, right? Uh, we want it to go down and in. And let's figure out the best way to uh, fasten this one together. Let's grab our tool and I think this one I will kind of aim for the center of the piece there or the center of the face I should say. So let's grab the center of the face right there and lock it into position. Okay good. Now we will have to do the orange and the black and I think we will do the orange next. This one is tricky. Let's see how does this one fit on there. Uh, oh, Okay I think all I will have to do 
is just rotate this one a bit and that should be about good now I'm not even gonna move this one into place I'm gonna try to just go even faster here and I'm gonna fasten this corner right here to uh, this corner right there okay and now it's in position and finally we'll have to put the orange one in place now hmm, I wonder if I can really uh, just kind of visualize this and put it into position here. Maybe that's gonna to be too hard. Maybe I better just be careful. No, and uh, move it into place first. All right, move it up. And then it's gonna to need to rotate a little bit as well. Well, let's click on it and we'll rotate it like that. And I think that, okay, that should about do it here. So let's see if we can again fasten it together. We'll just go center to center and there we go oh that somehow something didn't go right here let's see if we can rotate it mm, no can we swap the direction probably not maybe we can rotate it into place now no okay didn't like that all right so let's see must have done something wrong i think i just if i rotate it one more time that'll help so let's go ahead and rotate it this way okay there we go now we should be in better shape so let's try this again fasten it and again we'll lock that piece now to the other side there and we've got it fully assembled okay that feels good that's tough all right let's uh go ahead and we've got four fastened we've got one piece sort of fixed and based um <clears throat> so we have no more degrees of freedom left right and if you pull on one it doesn't move um okay so now we got to worry about the documentation of this which is actually kind of fun um, we can put the isometric view in there which is nice but before we do that let's build ourselves an exploded view and then on our sheet we'll put the isometric view in and we'll put the exploded view in as well so we'll click this little tool right here for exploded views add an exploded view and let's click and just oh no i forget okay you just want to click on it then you want to move it and I'm just gonna move it in one direction then I'm gonna click the green check mark okay now we've got step one to explode let's go ahead and pull uh, apart another one let's take the black one and drag it straight up and I'm gonna kind of try to give each of these the most natural direction right so they all kind of stay move in one direction okay that looks pretty good uh, so we'll click the green check mark. Okay, then I worked on the white piece, so let's explode that one. So I'm kind of just reversing my moves from earlier uh, where I put them into place. Okay, let's click the green check mark. And then the green one, lastly, let's move that out of the way right there. Okay, and we've got the green check mark. This is called explode one. Okay, perfect. So we've got it. That looks pretty good. I think people could kind of, you know, wouldn't maybe build it for them but it would give them pretty good pretty much tell them what the answer is what the solution to the puzzle is so okay let's click done and we've got it we've got our exploded views we can close that tab again now we can head over to our drawing so we're going to create a new drawing i'm going to choose b just to give me some extra inches to work with uh since this is you know kind of a uh, a bigger assembly with an exploded view and everything so again as per usual we're gonna start by inserting something and we're gonna insert our assembly first and foremost all right and let's change the view let's put the isometric view in there uh, default show all okay so let's go ahead and just put it right here that'll be a nice view of it I like seeing that green piece right there the problem is you can't see the colors, which you know obviously is not the best way to look at it. So what you can do is again, right click and choose show and hide, and then you can show the shaded view and you can see it in color, which is quite nice. Now we'll come over here and we'll put in our exploded view. So we'll insert another view and we're gonna insert assembly one, except instead of the default explode position we're going to choose explode one okay now that should fit pretty well let's just see what it looks like 
Mm, okay, that's not the view I wanted. I want a more of an isometric view. So we can go here and we can place uh, an isometric view and let's see what that looks like. Oh, but we want to choose our exploded one. Okay, so that is going to be quite a bit bigger. Let's click on it, see how it goes. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Maybe not the ideal view. I think the ideal view, we would be rotating it a little. So why not? We'll keep the video going just a little bit longer. Show that. Uh, you can just put yours in if, if you're tired of it. <clears throat> but one nice thing to do here would be to take a look at my exploded views right here. And let's kind of find the right angle for that. So I want to show sort of the blue one at the base I want to see what would be a good view I think that one's pretty good right there that's pretty similar to what we had um, but that one shows it pretty nicely I think so what I'm gonna do here uh, is I'm going to name this view how do I do that zoom to fit oh 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 camera and render options named views and then we'll call this one uh, explode one oops explode one view and there we go I think we should have it in there select a view explode one view okay cool so now that we've named that right like let's okay we'll go away from it and we'll see if we can find that named views and then explode one view and it will take us there Right, so we can set kind of a view that we like looking at it from. Now, I believe we'll be able to do the same thing in our drawing file here when we go ahead and place our exploded view. So we want the explode one view and we want the exploded version of it right there. All right, now let's go ahead and drop that in place. Let's see if it works. Okay, it does. And again, we'll turn it to color show hide and then show shaded view okay so it's processing there we go figured it out uh, so okay a bit of an extended video here um, but a fun skill to have here and 